So here I have the piece that's currently on display in fur, fin, and feathers, and it's called Having a Ball. The front of this piece is an antique cuckoo box frame. I uh, bought out this entire stock of a cuckoo clock repairman some years ago, and I have a lot of cuckoo clock parts. The head is a plaster cat head from the 1950s that I've altered with paint and glitter and some fur. Inside the book there's a scene from an 1800's children's cloth book with three mother cats doing the laundry in an old wash tub and they have a clothesline they're stringing up their clothes. In front of them three little kittens play with balls of yarn that they've managed to tangle up all around them and a tiny little bird watches from above. Um, the sides and back of this box are also covered with scenes from the children's book. Um, so that's all there. This is the piece, having a ball. We are going to learn how to do, how to build a diorama of your own. I stayed in a similar format with similar materials so you could get an idea um, how this one was made. So let's take a look at that. Hi, I'm Joan Wheeler, and this is my dog, Rusty. We're standing outside the studio, getting ready to go to work on a new piece. Today, I'm going to be making a cat diorama, and I'm going to show you step-by-step -step directions how to make one. So, to start out with, you'll need the frame that you've decided works best for your piece, a saw, some wood, tape measure, and a pencil. You're going to take your frame, turn it over, decide where the wood would go, how it will fit, take your measurements. I can't do these kind of cuts, but if you're an experienced woodworker, you can. For me, I'm going to go across this way. So my wood's going to be about 7 inches by about 8 inches, and I'll take more accurate measurements before I cut. For the side pieces, I'm using a lightweight pine and for the back I'm using a piece of birch balsa wood excuse me birch plywood so now I have the tacky glue which I'm using because that's all I have on hand but you can use any wood glue is fine um, I glued my four pieces of wood together after first checking as I laid them out that my angles are right angles. So my angles were fine, they're right angles. I put some glue between the pieces and I clamp them with these long clamps until it's dry. So now I have my finished box and I want an image to go inside it. I have found this great um, children's cloth book from the 1800s, very uh, deteriorated condition but I love the pictures, and this image really speaks to me. I love the cats dancing around the room and all looking aghast at the mouse's tail <laughs> peeking out of the floorboards. And since I live in a very old house, I do have mice, and this resonates with me. So, I'm going to, sadly, cut the piece out of this book, and I'm going to fit it to the inside of the box. So, getting the picture to fit proved a little tricky. First, I cut a paper pattern to fit inside the box. Then I noticed that when I cut the fabric, I saw some fraying edges in the, on the fabric. So I decided that I would mount the picture on a piece of foam core that I had uh, lying around. So I cut the foam core a little smaller than my pattern because my pattern fit exactly. And I wanted to make sure that I had enough room for the fabric to fit into the box when it was covered. So I used um, Elmer's spray adhesive. I did try the tacky glue on some sample scraps and, and this glue. I decided the tacky glue was too thick for me to work with easily. I glued the panel, the foam core panel with the picture in the box. For that I used tacky glue. Never put it in with spray adhesive because little bits of spray adhesive will go all over the walls and it'll stay tacky and rough. So now my next step is going to be to paint the inside 
to um, flesh out the scene in the background. And for that, I could use acrylic paints or oil paints. Craft paint, if, you, if that's what you have on hand, is fine too. It doesn't really matter. So I've painted the inside and used some watercolor pencil to add detail so it retains the look of an old barn around the sides. Now I'd like to add some three-dimensional detail. So I'm going to pull this cloth out here. Um, I've taken a piece of the old cloth book and put some paint on it and it's nice and crumply. I'm going to use that as uh, an extension for the cloth. And I have taken some red and yellow and mud-colored Sculpey, and I'm going to mix them together to make some more of this fruit. So that's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to put a little gray Sculpey mouse to go underneath the sheet. So I've added the three-dimensional details to the inside, the cloth, the Sculpey fruits, and the little mouse with his long tail sticking out of the box. So next, I have the inside finished, and I painted the outside this color, but it's kind of boring. So I think what we're going to do is to take the book and take some of the beautiful old written pages and turn them into paper wallpaper. So I'm going to wallpaper the outside of it with sections of the story. So I'll cover the outside sides, and I also like to do the back just to add a nice touch to it. I've glued the papers onto the outside of the box and now I'm ready to think about the front of the box. So I'm going to put the frame on. I'm going to glue that on and it's looking great except for the fact that there's this empty hole right here. So I happen to have one more cap head and it fills the space nicely so there's nothing um, no hole showing. But before I put this in, I'm going to do some special things to it. It's a little too shiny for my taste. And I'd like to change the color up a bit and maybe put some fur and some glitter and just dress it up. So the title of this finished piece is going to be Hiding in Plain Sight. I added the uh, super fine glitter to the ruff of the kitty cat and put pink velvety flocking on his nose, painted the inside of his ears, dyed some feathers in coffee and tea and glued them to give him a little bit of a furry look. Then I took some black and white Sculpey and created some mice with bead eyes. Um, the mice now are crawling around the box in different positions peeking in. And I decided I wasn't quite finished. I added some green super fine glitter to the um, crevices of the leaves. And I decided I wanted some inside out action. So where the mice are looking down at the tail going through the floor, I added a hole in the box I drilled through. And there's a tiny little mouse peeking through the hole. And over here on the back, you see his tail hanging off the edge. Then I added some hangers to the back. I use this D-type, D-ring type of hanger with a little wire on it so it's easier to hang. And now we have the completed box hiding in plain sight.